I, I, I got it about two months ago. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. But the best way to preserve it would be to open it out mm -hmm. and take it for professional conservancy framing. And the people that you should go to to inquire about that is a, there's a company up in Cleveland by the name of Yoder Conservancy. Conservancy. Yoder. And Yoder, they do work for the Cleveland Art Museum. They do framing and art restoration. You need to call them. They're up on Larchmont. Okay. You need to call them and say, I have something. I'd like, and you need to try to go up and see them. On the phone, they may blow you off. Okay. Um, I would take this and go up and see them. This is written in some form of an old English. And I would like to get it translated. Yes. They, 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 they could probably do that? No. The translation, no. All they can do is the art mounting. Okay. The translation, you need to go to one of the universities. Kent State, where there's language, ancient language. I've, I've been out to Case Western and uh, talked with the folks in the language department, and they, they say that they no longer have a medievalist on staff. See, that's so right. they, they, mm. they, yes, you they can't. I was thinking about going to the, the art museum. If you, know? you can get their attention. Yeah. <laughs> they do not always want to share the knowledge that they have. They used to have an identification day where you could take something in, but they are so busy you will sometimes get scant knowledge. Your best path is to go in through the academic world, in through a university. And I would look east, um, Philadelphia, Boston, where the classics are more valued than at Kent State which is a Midwest state school. You need one who is steeped in the early classic traditional education and find someone with a medieval um, language department. Any thoughts on the value? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Again, uh, I'm way out of my league. My guess is, though, like any material from that era, you're into four figures. And you, there are paper shows, and once again, very similar to the coins. There are paper shows, ephemera. And there is a man in uh, in, um, in Granger, who's that? Granger Road. And his specialty is paper and ephemera. There's also someone in Akron who does medieval um, work, a, a print work, manuscript, manuscript work, medieval manuscript work, who may be able to guide you some. <coughs> but that's what I would do. But kept in plastic, folded up, would not be an option that I'd want to consider long. You've only had it two no. months. But in time, yeah. you want to move forward with that and either make arrangements to keep it yourself, be funded to research. It would make a great master's degree <laughs> research project for somebody. <laughs> but um, I would want to mm, spread it out. Mm -hmm. And you know, even if you don't hang it, you are preserving it under a, a glass that you keep it safe. Mm -hmm. Would be my suggestion. Thank you very much. Yes. There's a little box here, and it is a coin. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is the coin. And it appears to be, again, an early German coin. Right. <laughs> you need a coin person. I do know coins, if you go online, they're all over the board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, they can be a dollar oh. and they can be $30. Right. I'll try to match it up. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. That, okay. that's what I would try. Right. To if do. you look close on that one, it actually has a Nazi swatch stick on it. Yes. So that you know the age right mm -hmm. there. Yeah. You're talking late 20s up through 45. Right. So that. Uh, that, that would mm. be my suggestion. Yeah. Find a okay. show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's mine. This. Is this your show? Yes. <laughs> Yay. We have here a little china set. It is a, a cup and saucer. Um, when one looks at the back, <coughs> it says Golden Rhapsody by the Keystone International. This is a pattern of the 50s. Right. It does not have great age, but it's very charming. Mm. This was also very typical of formal Lennox type uh, 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 china, is the simplicity of the gold band was a very popular. In fact, some of the china, if you're buying formal 
bone china. It's still a pattern from the band that they mm -hmm. still are, are selling. And this wheat pattern showed up as a design through the 50s. Mm -hmm. And this appears to be a little cup and saucer and a dessert plate. This was probably sold in sets of four, so that it was a what we more or less would call an entertainment <laughs> set, so that when you had friends over for dessert, they right. had their pie and the cup and saucer. And Okay. Um, it, it's a full dinner setting oh, too. Yeah, do you Comes, have a full dinner? Yeah. Yes, and I've got that a service for one, eight. In one box. That well, I originally had a service for four. My mother got them. You're all gonna love this. They gave away each piece with a free fill up at Ohio. <laughs> oh, no. So as you know, there was down there on yeah. by the old Dairy Queen, oh, R.I.P. Every time she got a Phillips, she got a free thing, and she saved them for me for when I got married. <laughs> then I was like in a, in a, um, you know, Salvation Army store or whatever yep, yep, out in Brunswick, <laughs> and there were oh a gosh. bunch of them oh on the shelf, and I'm like picking out the best oh, ones, absolutely. picking out the best ones, and I think I even got like extra pieces that I didn't have oh, yeah, for the service of eight now. Oh wow. Yeah, that's a nice so, story, you know, and, yeah. and that's that's the fun part about antiques. If there's a story with it, mm -hmm. uh, that makes it endears it beyond its value dollar wise. Right. You know. Yeah. Everything has layers. I still will. I still value, where, and there's market yeah, yeah. value, and there's resale value, and there's show flea market value, and there's and the but the most important one is the heart yeah. value. Yeah. Right. And that that's a heart value. Yes, one. it is. <laughs> Good for you. I know. I'm so excited. <laughs> Oh, 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 yes. Yes. Yeah, this mine. Mm. All right. Very nice piece. I think you had it earlier. A very nice handled piece of Nippon China. Probably from the 20s by its style and by the label on the bottom. Yeah. Yes, that would have been through the, through the teens, up at least to the 20s. Very, very ornate very good condition. Any piece of ceramic or pottery with a handle is more valuable than without. So if this were just a vase without the handles, it would have less value than the minute you put handles on, it becomes more desirable. The motif is very pleasing. Uh, this is primarily a decal application meaning this is not hand painted, or is it, let me look closely. Often there was a decal that was put on that uh, you can feel, but it was not individually stroked on. And it, it makes a wonderful, very attractive piece. Again, this would have been from a well-to-do home. And where did you find it or how? My mother bought it for her mother for a Christmas present about 1913. Nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. It's a good size. It's a very pleasing form. And it's tall enough for it so that it's, it's you know, important. Value here, there's a whole market of Nippon. There's a Nippon Collectors Club that one can join it. Where, where they share share their knowledge. Here I'd be about $250 nice. because of everything it has going for it. So. Right. Oh, the, the place settings? Yeah. I'm seeing that that's a good subject. I'm amazed at how dishware has been devalued. <coughs> I will go into a shop and here is exquisite having and I look at the price, and it's a service for eight, sometimes more, and maybe some serving pieces, and it's lovely, a little on the point side, but lovely, and the price would be $85. Oh. Oh, wow. This is so sad. Same with the uh, teacups, cups and saucers. I'll have a friend call me and say, oh, I want to sell my cups and saucers. And I'll say, oh, I hate to tell you. Mm. Nobody wants them. Wow. Unwanted. They can be as low as twelve and fourteen dollars. Well, they used to be twenty six. They used oh. to be fifty four. Oh. The whole thing. So back to the value of dishes. Um, a set of dishes from the fifties 
for the most part, if you had a nice set, I, I see it out in the market for $120, is what I would see. Now that for doesn't mean that's what it should be. Right? And that's for how many settings? 120, Pardon? $120? Yes. Per setting? Or? No. No. For the set. For the set. Oh. For yeah. a set of it's eight. heartbreaking. Four or eight? Yeah, eight. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it just feels just, uh, just isn't there. And right. It's hard just to change a lifestyle. Nobody even uses a cup of saucer. Y'all have a coffee mug. Mm -hmm. Right. We're, we're even drinking our okay. coffee. Okay. I bought it at a garage sale for 10 cents. Okay. Oh. So I put it in a garage sale that I was going to have. And yeah. This guy walks up to me and he says, are you going to put that in a garage sale? And I said, well, I was thinking about it. And he says, no, take that in your house and put it away and don't put it up for sale. Why? Mm -hmm. It's valuable. I said, it is? That's all I know. <laughs> all right. He said, it's red clay. Whatever red clay means. All right. All right. This is what I see. Okay. This is what I see. Yeah, 10 cents. That's very good. Yes, it is a red clay, which is this color, which also says a couple things to me. Oh, plus the form of it. It has a little foot. Do you see it has a foot? You know how some bowls are flat to the table? Mm -hmm. My first reaction is to say that this is an import. This is uh, Japanese. They have red clay. It is also in a category of what I call studio pottery, meaning it might be a very small studio that is producing earthenware, and this would be the title of this. It's not China. It would be earthenware is the correct name. It's actually a glazed earth earthenware. I also feel it is machine made. This is extremely regular. This is not a hand-thrown pot which is another reason I think it is commercial. What's nice about it is its form. The fact that it is up on the foot, and the rim isn't just a rim, it's convoluted down here at the side, it's candy. Very nice. 10 cents is about that. Yeah, she paid 10 cents. <laughs> now, this is, now if I owned this, I'd be selling it in my flea market inventory. It would not be in my show inventory. You might say, well, why not? It needs to have more more intrinsic value. If this had been hand thrown, that would help its value. The idea of it being redware, that's a very popular clay in Japan. So that, um, that, that is good, but it's much too smooth. It's much mm -hmm. too mechanized, machine made, mm. out of the mold, nothing value. I'd be putting mm, 15 to 22 dollars. Get some freedom and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Long-term investment. Long -term. That's right. It's, yeah. a, it's a dime. It's well. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Double their money. Who's this? <laughs> All right. We have a little oriental, what appears to be um, much of this material, and it's well marked, but I do not know the marks, I'll be honest. It appears to be Middle East. Look at the bottom. But it has the word patent. That out. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's just, I saw that when I came through the first time. You know, is it Israel? Is it a, is it a uh, you know, is it a, a tourist pickup item? All I know is that the market is currently being flooded by metals coming in from the Middle East. Syria is very big. Portugal, uh, along the Mediterranean, Spain, Spain, is doing that. Uh, there, and so is China. Half, half the brass candlesticks that you're seeing in the market are not old. They are stamped out of a factory. Um, this is probably a tourist who's bought it along the road in a marketplace, not along the road, but in a, in a, in a village marketplace as a gift item and would have been just a pickup item. Value here. I, I see these, and they're usually of $40 for the most part, this is the value that I see them at. This one, I would keep, definitely keep the tag. You may be able to have someone translate it. <laughs> but vintage, no, because it has the word patent on it. Just too bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Can push yeah. It yeah. Oh, before I leave, there's three pieces of furniture. I don't want to get too far away from them. We have three pieces of furniture on, up here on the stage. Who wants this chair? Okay, you want that chair also? All right. Friends, do you notice the similarity in our, in, in our visitor's taste? Mm -hmm. Do you see what she likes? <laughs> she likes a chair of distinction. Uh, this is a chair, and, and the legs are referred to as sausage turn. Mm. And if you look at the legs on that chair, they look like links of sausage. <laughs> and that's the furniture of turns that's used. Mm. But this would have been a decorative chair for use at the dining table or a hall chair. chairs out of pine usually because they don't over time they don't bear the weight of the human body. That's why you'll often find chairs are maple and they are oak and they are ash and other woods. This is a, a carved ornate chair. It looks extremely European. That is not a snake by the way. You might <laughs> think it is. That is not a snake. It appears to be more of a heraldic symbol, which then says to me we're looking at a sort of a Teutonic German English kind of look to the chair. It is fact that uh, it is not a, a particularly handcrafted chair, but it is of high quality and would have been sold uh, age-wise here. I see 1890 to 1905 for the most part. And you, you bought it at auction, you say? All right. <laughs> Value. Again, wanted item. Actually, these are a wanted item if you live in a neighborhood that has some of the early Tudor houses, much as you would see up in Cleveland Heights, the University Heights, those, those larger homes that were built in the 20s. That is the customer who would like this chair <laughs> because her house has that that old world European feel. So the value here, I would be putting about a one, 185, 190, somewhere like wow. that. Wow. Yeah. Think it's more than that. Center. Who's is that? Uh, what can you tell us about it? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, yeah. The only thing I know is, I hate to say this, but I'm 70. My mom gave it to me, and her mother gave it to her. Wow. They came from Sweden. They came over to Sweden okay. yep. together, and that came with them with a the trunk too. And nice. that's all I know. Nice. Wow. Actually, that's a fair amount. Wow. All right. Yes, this is has. I'm going to say. I'm going to say it has a European look. And you say, well, how do you know that? Yeah. Look at the base of the furniture. That is not traditionally a style that American furniture makers are renowned for. We put feet on items. <laughs> our, our, we have legs and there might be a little um, bulbous strip at the bottom, but we do not have this open open fretwork. This is what we, and the trim up on the top is referred to as stick and ball. It's a stick and then the ball, which is a um, an outgrowth of all of 1870s to, again, 1910 give or take. Um, it does look European. And you say, well, why? What makes that piece of furniture European? If you look at the side panels, it has, a, which is actually a plus, to the, the, the sides are not just the plain uh, board. There is a panel. But the manner in which the panel is made is a European style as opposed to an American style. Our side panels are different. It has nice hardware, it has the original hardware. Even though the key's gone, <laughs> it is original. And this open fretwork is, is, is very very charming, makes it a bit lighter in feel. And if it would sit to the floor, it would have a lighter feel. It is probably a bedroom piece, or a, a, a private room piece, and would have been for, for storage for small toiletries or personal items. What's nice on this size, everybody's hunting that.